The difference is, is that contact, it's just done much more elegantly. It's not heartfelt at all. I don't understand. Is it supposed to be? I wish I could say it went better. I'm definitely leaving this video with a better appreciation of the differences between our reading taste. Hi, my name is Josh. Welcome to Josh's Bookish Voyage. In this video, I'm going to be reading some of Ariel Bissett's favorite books and comparing our reading tastes. So I decided to do this video as the first of a few where I read some of my favorite booktubers, favorite books, and then just do a comparison of all the books that I've read of, that they've read to see how well we mesh. Because Ariel Bissett is one of my favorite booktubers. I'm sure a lot she's a favorite of a lot of people. I mean, she does a lot of great content. One of the things that I really like about her is that she doesn't just talk about books. She also talks about the art of reading itself, which I really love watching. It's just really interesting content. I get this idea for this video from a couple different booktubers, Books and Lala, I did reading some of the favorites of 2019. My goal here isn't to replicate that exactly, but rather think about the people that I enjoy watching the most and just test whether or not we actually mesh as well as I think we do. So what I'm gonna be doing here is comparing two different things. One, comparing the books we've read on Goodreads and comparing some of her favorite books that I'll be reading specifically for this video. Then asking myself, do we mesh up overall? Do we read the same kind of books? If not, it's like there are a section of books that I am not reading that I would love that I can get from Ariel Reset. To be clear, I don't just watch booktubers to find new books to read. There are some booktubers I just love watching because I love the charisma and I love hearing them talk, even if I don't have the same reading taste. So really the part, the goal here isn't necessarily to say I'm not gonna watch her anymore if I don't have the same reading taste. It's just to test this idea that I have that I Maybe we do have the same reading taste, at least in some areas. She has a literary background. She reads a wide array of different books, like I try to do. But I also know she reads a lot of YA, which is not always my forte. For this video, I've narrowed it down to three of her favorite books that she's talked about. I didn't go out of my way to buy brand new books. These are books that I already owned, which is part of the criteria of how I decided what I was going to read here. But these are the books. The first book wasn't classified as one of her favorites for the last few years, but in 2017, she did highlight it as something that had a profound effect on her. That is Turtles All the Way Down. This book isn't one of my personal favorites, but it's one of the best books I read this year and it means a lot to me. So even though the content isn't necessarily what means a lot to me, the book really does. The main reason I ended up choosing this despite it not being the absolute favorite was because in the last few years she hasn't highlighted a lot of different books. I wasn't buying brand new books so I had to find ones that she was talking about. So we'll see how this is much. The other one is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green, which she has talked about a good deal, at least she did it last year. I knew I was gonna like this book. I just thought it was mainly gonna be a book that like I enjoyed the plot and then it ended up blowing my goddamn mind and it is that it's that funny thing that people always say like i felt so seen i did i felt seen i felt heard i felt represented i'm hoping i really like this i was feeling like just about this going in but since reading the scythe trilogy i am more hopeful because i I've come to realize that it's not that I don't like YA, it's just that there are all very specific types of YA that I like. And there's bad YA and there's good YA. So we'll see if this is something I'm compatible with. I'm hoping it is. I mean, she talked so highly of it, so I'm hoping it meshes. The next one is Animal Farm by George Orwell. My first recommendation is actually my favorite classic of all time. I recommend this to absolutely everyone and it is Animal Farm by George Orwell. I feel very confident saying that George Orwell is one of my favorite authors because when I was reading his books and his essays, I felt an instant connection to his mind. The first book I ever bought by George Orwell was Animal Farm. This was the first book I ever read by George Orwell back in high school and I completely fell in love with it. I love George Orwell. Number one, the George Orwell factor. George Orwell is my favorite author. Number two, the Animal Farm factor. Animal Farm is my favorite book. <laughs> this is a collection of that in 1984. And I've already read 1984 before, I think a couple times. So I, I think I'll enjoy this. I mean, I like George Orwell. I haven't read him as religiously as Harry Elvis said, but I still like him. I did a small overview of our Goodreads readings and they weren't that well matched. Of all the books we have marked on there, I think only like 5% of my books were on her list of books and 70% of her books were on my list of books. And then among those, those that we actually matched up with as having read, there weren't that many. I mean, we love Harry Potter and that's a gimmick, a gimme. We both really enjoyed A.S. King, which to be honest, I only read A.S. King because of her and Books and Lala's recommendations. That's an example of someone who I was not reading 
and then I started reading because of people like Eric Brissett recommending it. That is a plus in the area of a new realm of books that I'm not giving attention to that she can introduce to me. Another example of a book we've read, Sadie by Courtney Summers. I gave that book three and a half stars. She did not rate it, but she did review it. And she said she loved the audiobook, which of course it's fantastic. But she said she never really connected with the characters, which I felt similarly. So I'm hoping that bodes well for these two YA books that I'm reading because maybe that means we have the similar, we want a similar type of tone from a YA book. I mean, I, that then again, she didn't say she loved Tools All the Way Down, so maybe, maybe I'll like it, but not love the characters. I don't know. But I'm really hoping to like an absolutely remarkable thing. One thing I did notice was that we don't, she doesn't read a lot of sci-fi, which is something I do read. I don't read a lot of, a lot of high sci-fi, which is to say like space operas and things like that. It tends to be more modern day or futuristic but not too like widespread i think a good example might be psy which is very futuristic and very well created but at the same time still very accessible i think to the average reader the question is whether or not i will like the same type of sci-fi i mean i know some YA sci-fi can be i just not that great based on my experience i'm hoping for good things from an absolutely remarkable thing okay it is I just after midnight on Sunday now, which is when I planned on beginning this uh, challenge of sorts. So I'm about to bike home. I've been biking at night to avoid crowds, and that's because I like the atmosphere. And uh, I'm going to start an absolutely remarkable thing. I've already listened to the first like two minutes, and I'm intrigued. Let's get this going. Full disclosure, I did have to refilm the intro, so I talked as if. I hadn't read it already, or hadn't started reading it, but I have started reading Our Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. I think I'm maybe 20% through the book so far, and I'll admit, I'm not in love with it just yet. I mean, I am enjoying it, it's fine, but the tone and the characters are very much not what I was hoping for. Again, I think the best comparison here is to size. It just doesn't feel as realistic. And that's the other thing is that the situation, like I, I, I'm all for imaginary creative situations, but I'm not necessarily convinced that the way the situation is being handled is believable, given some of the assumptions. Editing Josh here. I just want to clarify. I understand this is a work of fiction. And given that, I'm happy to accept any type of absurd premise, no matter how extreme. And honestly, the premise of an absolutely remarkable thing isn't as extreme as scythe. My problem is is that once you set the premise, what I do care about is whether or not the actions that our characters and the world around that it's set in takes needs to be believable. I need to believe that if this actually happened, this is the series of actions that would take place. Now, in terms of what it's like to be a booktuber, or rather a YouTuber, and a celebrity and the role they might play, that part Granted, I don't think I'm capable of making that type of judgment, at least it's not as well as Ariel is. But as far as how the country handles it, and how the nations handle it, and how the president would handle it, I have some problems there. And that's what, what I mean when I'm trying to say the believability is messed up here. The believability on how they would handle it, not necessarily the premise itself. I, I just don't know if it's working for me just yet. There's also the problem of it being a YouTuber's perspective, which I thought I was going to enjoy more. But really, it's like... Is this really what it's like to be a YouTuber? Do I have to be a YouTuber to enjoy this? Because I'm not really loving this idea of becoming famous. Like maybe I can understand why she would because she is YouTube famous. I don't know. I'm not finding it that compelling, which is really disappointing. Already this video is not turning out great as far as how well we mesh, which is sad. Okay, it is Monday. Let's ignore the fact that I haven't changed shirts since the last time I recorded a clip but I finished an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. I gave this three out of five stars. Let's just cut straight to it. It wasn't what I was hoping for. This doesn't bode well for this video. This highly regarded book that I was so sure I would love it was just not very good. I mean, it was fine. I enjoyed it, but it, I don't understand the extreme excitement of it that Ariel had. I'm glad she enjoyed it. May, may, I am glad she enjoyed it, but I, I maybe I do understand why she connected with it, because it's about a, a YouTuber being famous. The problem is I don't think there's a lot of nuance in here. The characters just 
aren't that interesting. They seem very one-dimensional. Our main character, she, she's supposed to be presented as someone who is becoming progressively more selfish and fame-oriented as she is getting no notoriety and fame from her YouTube channel. The problem is, is that everything about her character suggests she's just a shitty person from the get-go. The way she treated her girlfriend before she really had gained much notoriety was it's really kind of trashy and it was just representative of a very bad partner overall and kind of a selfish way of thinking and there wasn't much growth there and it wasn't until the final pages that they were they're all angry and rushed in this character development where she finally realizes that she's become this self-absorbed youtuber who's rejecting all of her true friends one it was rushed two it wasn't earned I didn't see her being any different now as she was before, meaning she was this way the entire time. I, I didn't know much about Hank Green going to this, but I just did some Googling, and apparently he and his brother, I, mean, I know they have a YouTube channel, but apparently they do like a science channels, which makes me surprised because I thought this idea, while interesting, wasn't very unique. It seems to be a combination of a bunch of different ideas. I mean, Transformers among them, Contact, Arrival. Oh, God damn it broke my Legos. Contact by Carl Sagan was, is, is a similar story of First Contact where, just ignore the sticker, Contact by Carl Sagan is a similar story of First Contact. We have this advanced alien species contacting. You have these people who are in favor of investigating it, of, of continuing the contact, of confirming that they are good, that they are, understand what it is they want, and give them some trust, some international collaboration. Then, of course, you have the religious zealots, or the zealots who are adamantly against it for whatever reason, as we see in an absolutely remarkable thing. The difference is, is that contact, it's just done much more elegantly, much more effectively. The characters are realer, the science is better. Like, I'm all fine with absurd premises. The problem is, is that we set the premise, which I feel like, again, isn't that creative. And then it goes from there, and given that foundation of this premise, I don't find the series of events that follow that believable, and that's a problem. But once you create the premise, you have to create a series of events that should logically follow given that premise, and I did not think that was occurring here. The characters were, like I said, one-dimensionally so self-absorbed, kind of annoying, heavy-handed topics being covered here, and the story itself was just kind of bland. It rushed to the end, and for what? What did this story actually give us? It doesn't really sound long as a book. I haven't decided if I'm gonna read the next one yet. I'm intrigued and mildly interested. Like I didn't actively dislike it while I read it. I, what I will say is that if you liked an absolutely remarkable thing, you should give this a try, Carl Sagan's Contact, because again, it's a similar type of story. It's not about a YouTuber, obviously, but it's about this idea of first contact and how one it might logically happen, which isn't in the form of Transformers coming to the surface, and two, the type of events that would actually play out. The fact that there are similar themes in both of these just represents how he's got some stuff right in here. For a more effective first contact story, I highly recommend this. If you don't want to read this, at least check out the movie with Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey. It's fantastic. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. So this is disappointing. I am at a new position where I think I'm going to leave this video thinking, I love her of content, but maybe we don't have the same reading taste, which is unfortunate. For now though, I'm going to read Turtles all the way down. It's about 9 p.m. I think I'm gonna go for a bike ride because no one's gonna be outside at this time and start listening to this. I just don't know how to articulate how disappointed I am in this book. I just, I think part of the problem was that right before I read this, I finished the Scythe trilogy. I read the first and so I read the second and the third one of that trilogy. And because of that, I have this world that is just so well developed, so well thought out. This, a young adult sci-fi world that is well thought out, really well developed characters, really great writing. Jumping into this, which basically feels like the Riverdale version. It's like watching Buffy versus Riverdale. Like Scythe is Buffy and this is Riverdale. We have very similar types of stories, but one is just not the same level, which like I enjoy Riverdale and just like I enjoyed this, but it's not, it's just not as good. It just is what it is. Some books, some YA books, I understand they're, like, they're written for YA, for young adult audiences, but there's something about this type of writing which just feels, I guess, less realistic. That's the idea. It's less realistic. You reframe the world, 
presenting actions and characters, both young and old, in a way that makes sense to a young adult mind, but not necessarily consistent with reality. Like we can focus on young adult characters who can do young adult things, which are believable, without having everyone be like that. <laughs> One more time. Contact by Carl Sagan. I kind of want to read this now. Okay, now it is Tuesday. Every day is the same day. All days blend together. Um, basically, it's the next day. Surprise, I didn't go biking. Uh, as soon as I said that, I realized, Josh, you're tired. You want to go to sleep, Josh? And so that's what Josh did. But tonight, it is about 9 o'clock, and I'm actually going to go biking tonight. I already started getting dressed. I have on two layers of pants for the 32-degree weather outside. I'm halfway through. Turtles all the way down. I'm really hoping for a very strong ending because I'm not loving it. I don't actively hate it or even dislike it, but it's probably three-star material for me right now. Like, I feel like I get why it's praised. I recognize the good. Like the, the topics he is discussing, John Green, like I, I respect him for, t for covering it. Like they need to be addressed. I'm just not convinced they're the most effective. Am I qualified to say that? No. It's more like the situation as a whole. But we have this two friends, this one girl who has some health issues, some mental health issues, and she's getting them addressed. And then she has another friend who is just very selfish, self-absorbed. They meet these two guys very quickly are falling for each other clearly. It seems a little forced, the relationships. Also, the one guy is super rich. That situation just seems weird. The dynamics around it seem weird. There's one part where he does something for her because he needed to do it to feel comfortable with her. And if you read it, you know what I'm talking about. And to me, that's just like, are you kidding me? They can't be in a relationship after he did that. It's like, that's it's so toxic. It's like, ooh, like, what kind of relationship is built on that? It's just, it's not heartfelt at all. I don't understand. And is it supposed to be? I'm really hoping like it gets flipped on its head by the end of the novel. But who? It's just like, ugh, what kind of, am I supposed to be feeling for this relationship? Because I'm not. It's just all the characters, they just seem very kind of one-dimensional. Maybe the main character, no. But her friend, yes. Her mother, yes. So again, I'm hoping for just a strong ending where this really brings it home. At the very least, make it sad for me. I mean, I'd love to cry, even if it's a bit of a, a bit much. I don't know. It just, I think it was supposed to be heartfelt. It didn't work for me. I'm really glad that it does work for some people. I guess it's just my way of learning what does and doesn't work for me. For the purpose of this video, we're looking at strike two of a good, of in on par reading taste, which is okay. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. I still love Ariel's content. I will say, I guess that was hesitant coming in here. I kind of wish I read this one first because I was already hesitant for this one. I just, I don't know. I just, I don't know if it's just the YA approach or writing style that i mistaking for a lack of depth. It maybe just doesn't work for me and that is okay. But you know what, we'll see. I finished it. I went on my bike ride. I definitely liked the second half more than the first half. I end up giving the book three and a half out of five stars, which I think is slightly better than when I gave uh, his brother Hank Green's book. And I felt like there was more nuance coming to the characters. The story as it played out was more believable. And also I think he, because he just really went, he went deep into our main character. I can't really say for sure how accurate it is, but I 
thought it was handled with a good, a good level of nuance. And I really enjoyed and appreciated how he did that. And that really reshaped how I thought he was handling the characters. I still feel like her best friend was kind of a shitty person. And while she had a bit more depth added to her, I think she could have used a bit more character growth. I feel like all she is is making mistakes and then apologizing for it. And then the main character just tolerating it. And I don't think that's okay. I feel like she just needs to do better. What little growth there was, I'm not sure I saw how that growth actually occurred for our side character there. Otherwise, I still enjoyed the rest of it. I felt like the relationship parts were handled really well. I don't think there was really any res resolution of that one part that I alluded to before, of that gift given by her not boyfriend. I still feel like that part of the story was still kind of like weird. Not just unbelievable, but also just not healthy for anyone involved. But all in all, I still solidly enjoyed the book. I wish I could say it went better. I mean, I wanted to come out of this thinking, oh, I'm gonna love, I loved all her books, but I didn't. I liked them and I recognize the good parts or why she likes them. There are parts that I just don't, that, is, that make them not work for me as well. I don't think it's, this has been a complete loss. I feel like some of our favorite books always have something really significant about them. Like the concept of an absolutely remarkable thing. It's really cool, and even if I don't love how it was executed, I still love thinking about that. And the same here, thinking about mental health. I love that. So, in a way, I will say that there is still something to be gained for me as far as finding good recommendations from her, and that if she likes a book, there's probably something to be gained there, even if it's not necessarily my type of book. It's still more layers to it, if that makes sense. I mean, I think I've made it clear if you watched any of the other videos that I read books for more than just raw enjoyment. Even these I still enjoyed, even if I sort of cringe at certain places. I mean, I, so I think it's like a, a mixed bag, which is fine. I mean, nothing's the, ever perfect. The world's not black and white. But I have started Animal Farm, and I will say I'm really enjoying that. I'm really hoping that, that comes out as five stars. How could it not be? So I'll probably finish it tomorrow morning or something. I probably should go to bed soon. But in any case, I call this a semi-win. <laughs> okay, see you later. Okay, I finished the last book, Animal Farm by George Orwell. Gave it four out of five stars. I really enjoyed this. I thought it was really well told, very poignant, even today. It's not exactly about capitalism like I thought. It's about authoritarianism. Although I feel like there are similar themes between the two that, that could definitely be made. I thought it was just really a really fun read if scary considering the current political climate. Obviously, it's not my favorite all the time. Didn't expect that, but I guess if I were to extrapolate from one anecdotal point, maybe maybe her, her class of recommendations or something that I might need to be more inclined to read. Or maybe we just don't have that similar reading taste. That is the thing that I draw from this video. What I will say is that I will continue to watch her because I love her content regardless. And I'll probably continue to keep trying to pick up her, the books she recommends because there's usually some extra depth there that has appealed to me in all of these books. That said, I'm definitely leaving this video thinking, or I guess with a better appreciation, of the differences between our reading taste, which is perfectly fine. That was the point of the video. The challenge my perceptions of how well I mesh with some of my favorite booktubers. This video was a little tiring, especially leading up to the reading rush tomorrow. I hope you all enjoyed watching it. I did enjoy reading the books, even if I did come across a little critical here. I'm hoping it comes together well enough, because I'd like to keep doing this for other booktubers. Ariel is only one of many booktubers who I love watching and who I think or thought I have similar reading days to. But until next time, Remember to stay safe and stay inside as much as you can. And goodbye.